Today we're going to tackle Amy's colour. Now she's been green and blue and purple and all of those colours for a really long time but she wants something a bit more natural. So we're going to try and bring her back to something a bit more natural. As you can see there's this green colour in the fringe and what we're going to do is try and lighten kind of this perimeter colour. We're going to keep some of this colour underneath here but we're going to turn it more blonde. Now this is going to be a journey. There's no way we're going to get this done in one go and it's really important that we acknowledge with our clients that you know sometimes these things can take three or four goes. Even when we lift this, we're probably going to end up with some kind of pale green, potentially, that we'll then need to neutralise with pink. Who knows? I have literally got no idea exactly what's going to happen today, because sometimes we take things on where we cannot predict the future. In this horseshoe area that I'll take out through the top here, though, what we're going to do is we're going to tint the ends, but we're going to keep it off her scalp, because she wants this veil of colour that is more natural, neutral, and means that she needs less maintenance. She wants to keep that colour underneath, but then ultimately she doesn't want to have to keep colouring the top. Number one, the condition's not so great on the top because she just must roll around in her sleep a lot, although she's just recently bought a silk pillow. I believe she slipped off the bed several times <laughs> since she got it. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that her hair's quite fragile by nature, it's quite fine. If you're a client, you know, and you're coming in with things that are outside of the normal remit of just, you know, a balayage set highlights routine, please don't put the pressure on your stylist to do it in one go. It's not always achievable, even in the best will, you know, and the truth of the matter is, yes, you might, you might go somewhere else and, you know, they might be able to do it in one go, but what have they put your hair through to get it there in one go? So what I've done is I've put Amy's hair into a circle section that goes, through the prior, top of the prior ridge, through the top of the occipital bone and back round again. Um, this is the area that we're going to darken down uh, on Amy's hair so that obviously that veils all of this light stuff underneath. And as you can see with this uh, lighter hair that is all through underneath here, we are beginning to see that some of the areas are more weaved, some of the areas are more sliced. Um, we're not going to hit every single piece of green hair. Now it's really important to be really upfront about that with your uh, guest or client or whatever you call them when you are, you know, um, about to embark on something like this. I mean, round the back, it really does get a bit higgledy-piggledy in terms of just the sheer volume of, um, you know, colour that's going through here. It's just absolutely tons of brown mixed in with it. I'm going to really, really avoid the brown pieces, like the plague, uh, just based on the fact that I don't want to be dealing with any kind of orange tones afterwards. Um, as we're probably going to be neutralising it with pink, if we do hit any of the brown pieces, it's not going to be the end of the world. They might go a bit corally. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. Um, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to tackle this in just a second, but it's really simple. It's just a case of eyeballing it. There really is no other way of doing this, unfortunately. You know, it is just a case of taking a look at what you've got here, deciding what the, um, the, the, you know, the best section to take is. I'm going to start and simplify my life. I'm going to take a quad quadrant um, that runs down from kind of the back of the ear through to the middle of the front hairline and I'm going to tackle that one first. In terms of the sections that I've got here, I've got this whole section here where all the ends are green. So all I'm going to do is take the whole section and then I'm going to saturate those ends. We're using a very, very low um, peroxide. So we've mixed it with 1.5%. I just think it's really important that we kind of, you know, vary our peroxides dependent on our results. So we're going to go through each section We'll see what we get. If there's any brown pieces in there, um, then we'll just drop them out. So for example, say we've got this piece here and hopefully it comes across okay on the camera. Uh, we'll just drop out any of the brown pieces that are in the hair there like that. Uh, you know, dead simple, nice and straightforward. And um, yes, we are going to leave behind a little bit of green if we do that, but so be it. You know, we have to kind of um, make our decisions about which bits we can and can't get. If there's quite a lot of green in one section that we drop out, and I will assess that before I kind of carry on, then obviously, you know, we can probably just add it in afterwards. So if we came back in and had a look at the section, like that bit fell out, that can go in, and probably just that tiny bit there. So it's a little bit arduous, you know, in terms of, um, you know, making it work. But at the same time, it is a whole lot easier to do it this way than any other way because if you're trying to bleach but then we've got orange banding and you know really creating ourselves an, an enormous amount of work like this piece for example you know it's got dark mixed in here that little bit's going to be green on the ends but there's this blue bit that starts about there there is some uh, brownie pieces in there so we want to get rid of those 
you know, equally. And, um, and then obviously this whole side of that section needs to go as well. So we've got this bit to a map. And we, what we're going to do is we've got color higher up and color lower down. So what we'll have to do is, is make sure that, you know, we go in and paint on the diagonal as well. So stick your ends down at the, at the lowest point and then feather up towards the highest point is probably the only simple and easy way to do that really. Um, just slide your foil down because you're not going to stick all of the ends. And then it doesn't matter if this bit kind of pokes out. Um, we can just go back in, resaturate that, and rather than leaving that exposed, just fold your foil over it like that. We don't need to fold our foils in this particular instance. It's really not necessary at all. So when we get to these areas on the head where we've got like three pieces of color, we do need to just obviously really make sure that we're only picking out as much of the green as we can humanly get then assess what we've got left behind. And if there's too much brown, then we need to get rid of some of it because it will only cause us pain later. Okay, so we've got the fringe area now, which is just pure slices, basically. Um, so not that difficult to deal with in terms of, you know, the section, nothing to pick out, just obviously a lot shorter in this particular area. I've done three quarters of the highlighting section and I'm on to this last quadrant. And to be honest, there's not a lot to show you here. It is very much a repetition. We are just simply picking out the hair and, you know, if it's all blue or all green, we're going all in. This is going to, we'll just do all of this section. I'll join you once I'm actually coloring the top. So I will work my way through here off camera and I will join you once I've deciphered all of these pieces and it really honestly is like this you're just removing any pieces that are really really brown from the hair got all the foils in jobs are good and so we have missed some green bits so that's why we decided to go through and you know color all of these end bits in between and then go back and do that top section so i'm going to go through and just grab these bits as and when work the product through the hair and then i will jump back onto the top section in just a moment where I'll show you how I manage keeping that off the scalp, especially where the hair kind of lays onto the scalp area. But it's dead simple to find the pieces because you just pick up a piece of hair. It will work its way through the foils because the foils are so sporadic um, that if you just grab a bit of hair, it will just rise to the top. And uh, Bob's your uncle, you can just paint away. So super easy to do and um, very, very quick. Crown section, uh, but we're gonna start in the back of this top crown section. We're gonna take a horizontal section like that. Um, we're gonna place a foil down, but before we place the foil down, we're gonna paint the underneath side of the foil so that the hair sticks to the foil like that. Then we get nice even saturation throughout. Elevate the section, side to side action. Don't fold the foil over just yet. In fact, we don't fold the foil over at all to be fair in this particular instance. All we need to do is feather up to pretty close to the root area. So there's approximately one eighth of the CB. I want the result to be fairly cool because Amy's hair naturally kicks off quite cool. We could have neutralized it with red before anybody jumps in with that uh, comment. Yes, we could have gone in with red. Main reason we didn't go in with red is because I wanted to deepen it enough um, because we would have to now go in and do a toner application that was off the scalp, which is a big faff. Hopefully you'll be able to see that it's lifted pretty clean. There's a little tiny, tiny fleck of green in there. So Amy's not allergic to um, blue shampoo, violet shampoos, those kind of things. So what we're gonna do is do a purple shampoo and conditioner on her hair. And then we're gonna leave it like that. Because as I say, the, if it wasn't to do with the allergy factors and all that jazz, then yes, I would tone it. And I'd tone it with like 10N plus 10V or in that ballpark 10P, which is pearl, which is a purple shampoo. And that will do it. You know, that will cover pretty much all of that green at this level. So I think it will be quite cool once we're done. Well, you'll see it when it's dry. Um, but that's, that's my thoughts and feelings behind it all. I just wanted you to kind of understand my, you know, ideology behind not toning. There we go, all done. It's come out beautifully. I'm thrilled with the result. Amy likes it, which is always a bonus actually. It doesn't really matter if I like it, to be honest, as long as the client likes it. 
But um, yeah, we've really got a nice clean color in the front there. There is a little bit of green-ish, but it's not enough to worry about. It's not enough to warrant doing anything else to at this point. And this is what I'm saying about over-promising, under-achieving, and under-promising and over-achieving. When I set out on this, we said, yes, it's probably gonna take a few goes. I'd already said that to Amy, but actually we're like 98% of the way there in one go. So of course her expectations were very low and now they're up here and she just one more visit, one more toner, one more something to make it all look absolutely seamless. The color through the top at the back has blended actually almost perfectly. It's nearly ridiculous how well um, it's all blended in through here. And um, I'm really, really thrilled with the results there. So that's been it. This has been a nice little color correction video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>